Pinball isn't my thing. It never has been, and most likely it never will be. So a game like Pokemon Pinball by its very nature isn't going to be my cup of tea. Despite that, it's impossible to ignore that it's a quality game. There's two tables on offer here, a red and a blue one, which is a nice nod to the original games. The goal here is to not only get a high score, but to catch some Pokemon too. Once you choose a table, you get a random location picked for you which determines what Pokemon you can catch. Although this can be changed later on as you keep playing. It's clever how they manage to translate the core idea of Pokemon into a pinball game. You can indeed catch them all. Though it will take you a very long time to do so. Despite the Game Boy's limitations, the game looks great and runs fairly smoothly. The tables are split into two screens, which means you'll be flipping between the two fairly often as the ball reaches the higher section. This can be a little irritating after a while, especially if the ball is bouncing around a lot, but it's an understandable restriction from the limited resolution of the screen. The game also has vibration built into it, hence the bigger cartridge. It merely doesn't add much to the experience, but it's certainly not a detriment. If you dislike it, you can just disable it anyway. As you can imagine, the vibration feature does not work with the Super Game Boy, because if it did, the vibration would no doubt crash the entire game as it disturbs the contacts. Nobody would want to play a game that can essentially commit suicide. If you like pinball games then I'd definitely recommend giving Pokemon Pinball a go since there's a lot to love about it, but if you're a pinball poo pooer like myself then you probably won't get much out of it. For now I'll stick to Pokemon Gold if I want a Pokemon fix.